The American FDA approved this medicine after the first clinical trial because of its superior effect on controlling seizures that we have never seen before. And usually the FDA takes at least two long-term trials and follow-up studies to approve any medications for seizures. This medicine might change the way we treat epilepsy. So let's learn about this medicine together. The medication today is Cenobamate, also known as Excopri. Cenobamate was approved by the FDA in November 2019 for focal epilepsy with ages 18 and older. So it is relatively a brand new medication. This medicine has peculiar side effects and interactions with other medications. So make sure you stick until the end to know everything about this medicine before deciding if this medicine is good for you. And for doctors among you, I will give you the exact way how to prescribe, titrate, and manage this medicine very easily directly from the experts. Just as a disclaimer, this video was was not sponsored by the makers of the uh, drug, just to make sure that I give you my honest and professional opinion without any outside influence. To be honest, when I heard about this medicine, I thought that eh, this is like just like any other new medication will have a hype at the beginning and then and then that's it. But and also I lost interest completely when I heard about the side effects and interactions. So it can interact with other medications and there's a, an allergic reaction that happens. So when I heard those things I just said like eh, I will not use this medicine however when I went to uh, international conferences and I saw other doctors and so how effective this medicine is and how life-changing this medication can be for patients then I realized that my patients are missing on this opportunity so I decided to get out of my comfort zone and learn and try this medicine and the results were very very good. To discuss how effective this medication let's talk to the one who conducted the first clinical trials Dr. Gregory Krauss from Johns Hopkins University which I met at the last American Epilepsy Society conference in Chicago and that tells you a lot how much I am interested in giving you the best information as a a Mayo Clinic graduate, I'm talking to a doctor from Johns Hopkins. <laughs> Just kidding. We are we are very good collaborators, by the way. Very few people who have failed three or four of their medicines become seizure-free with the newer drugs. The the difference with Sinovamate, it's one of it's the first one where a substantial number of people who can't get their seizures controlled with any other medicines become completely seizure-free. We kind of um, categorize people as being drug resistant if they failed two or more seizure medicines that were you know, tolerated and they were able to try them. But if you continue having seizures despite treatment with more than two seizure medicines, less than 5% of patients become seizure-free on subsequent treatments. Now with Sinovamate, it was quite a bit higher. It was about 21% in the clinical trials and in our extension trials where we're able to manipulate doses and, um, and optimize treatment, it was about 25%. And so that's a significant number. Also, the responder rate in terms of people with marked seizure reduction was 60%. And another thing that was very helpful was there was almost complete control of the grand mal tonic-clonic seizures in these trials. Like, for example, I had eight patients with tonic-clonic seizures in clinical trials with Sinovamate, and all of them, that seizure type stopped. As you know, that's the most serious seizure type. Just to put these numbers into context, let's compare these numbers with the highest uh, prescribed medication for epilepsy, which is levetiracetam or Keppra. In the trials for levetiracetam, the seizure response, which is 50% reduction in seizures, were 39.8%, and the seizure freedom was 5.5% only. So this is compared to 64% in uh, seizure response and up to 28% in seizure freedom. So there's a huge difference in the efficacy of this medicine. And that's why the FDA approved it right away after the first study. And these numbers were confirmed after the long-term follow-up studies, which followed the patient for two to three years on average, and also for other people who published their own experience with this medicine, and they all reported the same numbers. So what is the mechanism of Sinobamate? Well, the mechanism of Sinobamate 
dopamate is blocking the sodium channel. So it decreases the electricity flowing and speed in the brain. Also, it works on enhancing GABA-A inhibition, which decreases the electricity overall in the brain. What are the side effects of synobamate? Well, most common side effects with this medicine are sleepiness, dizziness, headache, fatigue, and double vision. And these are those dependent. That means that usually the body will get used to those uh, side effects as the medication progress with time, and especially if it was titrated slowly. And it is recommended to stop driving while starting this medicine because of the sleepiness and uh, dizziness. And in general, we don't recommend driving for people who have uncontrolled epilepsy. There are rare side effects on the heart called short QT syndrome, which means that there is some issues with the heart conduction. So if you have issues with the heart conduction and electricity, you should consult your doctor and you should not take Synobamate if you have familiar short QT syndrome. And the second rare side effect, it is called DRESS syndrome, which is drug reaction with xenophilia and systematic symptoms, which is an allergic reaction that happens in multiple organs in the body, and sometimes it can be serious. And this side effects was seen when the medication at the beginning was given very fast and titration was high doses at the beginning. And then we learned the trick right away and we slowed down the titration. It only happened in three patients at the beginning and once the titration was slowed down, it did not happen at all until now. So it is important to follow the recommended titration schedule, which I will discuss shortly. Okay, let's talk about how to use synobamate and how to titrate it correctly when the patient is taking many other medications and interactions. There are a couple drugs that can have drug interactions with it, where if you add this drug, their blood levels will go up. And so it's very important that neurologists lower those medicines as they start this medicine. And, and, and when we do that, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a straightforward drug to use. But many physicians, I would say, are still in the learning phase of how to use the medicine. Synovamate is similar to Lamotrigine, where several patients had serious allergic reactions when it was started quickly. So we started slowly using starter packs, pills on a card, over 12 weeks. And by starting slowly, we've had no cases of serious allergic reactions. So the drug is automatically titrated using starter packs up to 200 milligrams a day. And then as we go up slowly on the medicine, we often drop down on other medicines. And the drug's very effective, so that's a very effective conversion. So many patients who are on two drugs should probably drop off one of their other drugs as they go up in Sonobamate. But if you titrate the drug slowly, convert from their ineffective prior drug, patients tolerate the drug very well. If you combine it with drugs where blood levels go up, you can get the standard side effects you can see with pretty much all the seizure drugs at high doses, dizziness, sedation, imbalance, kind of grogginess, intoxication symptoms, but that can be avoided. So if you titrate it slowly, convert from other medicines, we don't see those side effects. So at the very highest doses, the highest dose that's, uh, that's um, tested and approved is 400 milligrams a day. Most people can be treated from 200 to 350 milligrams a day. And in that dose range, it's, it's uncommon actually to get side effects unless, again, you're combining it with multiple other drugs at high doses. So there's two types of interactions. One is there's what we call pharmacokinetic interactions. So some drugs affect the metabolism of other drugs. This drug can block the metabolism of clobazam, phenytoin, and phenobarbital. So when you start this drug, you should markedly reduce the doses of those other drugs, at least by half usually. And so that's one type of interaction. So early in titration, we lower these drugs where their metabolism is blocked by synovamate. And by doing that, we've had very good outcomes with no problems with toxicity. If you don't do that, the patient can get kind of drugged. And then as we go up to the full dose of synovamate, if they're on high doses of other medicines, particularly sodium channel drugs like uh, lacosamide, if they're on a high dose of that drug, it's usually best to drop down on that drug also. So, so, so basically avoid these major drug interactions we call pharmacokinetic interactions as you start the drug, as you go up to full titration doses, we often suggest you lower their other medicines. Um, and, and that works very well because the drug's very effective. It's not 
like you're worried that you aren't going to have breaks, you know, as you lower the other medicine. This drug kicks in at around 100 milligrams a day and can give you very good efficacy at lower than the target dose. So that allows you time to reduce the other medicine. Is Sinovamate safe in pregnancy and breastfeeding? At this point, we do not have data on pregnancy and breastfeeding with Sinovamate. However, preliminary data from animals showed potential harm to the fetus. So if you get pregnant while taking Sinovamate, it is recommended to enroll yourself in the pregnancy registries in your country so that we can learn more about this new medication. This medicine might change the way we approach epilepsy surgery. Now the question is, if you are a candidate for epilepsy surgery, should you try Sinovamate before doing the surgery? Well, we looked at our patients who had failed surgery who were in our clinical trials, they did very well. All, many of them became seizure-free with treatment. And so it at least showed the possibility that people who have ended up requiring surgery can often do well with this treatment. I would say if you're a very, very um, excellent candidate for surgery, you know, something that where they have maybe some lesion in some easily operated area where it's safe to operate, maybe surgery would be, um, you know, preferred for someone who's an optimal candidate. But many patients, they risk memory problems or they have difficult to treat um, surgical lesions. They're in critical areas or they're large. And I, I do think this treatment should be tried if, if they're less than, let's say, a perfect surgery candidate. So I remember the first time I, I used Sinovamate. I remember I called a patient, saw them, explained to them that this is a new medication, and then I hit the prescribe. I was like, ah, I have to, I have to prescribe it. And then after that, I sent the medicine, and the, the patient was very happy on the follow-up, and we were titrating the other medication, dropping down, I was able to stop the medication. And now I am calling all of my patients who failed surgery or they were surgical candidates, but were not able to get them surgery. And they are having many seizures and the other medication did not control their seizures. And so far I have nine patients taking Sinovamate and all of them had very good experience. And it was a very good management to do. And one doctor told me that his patient thinks that he's a genius because the patient was having a brain tumor and having uh, lots of seizures and he gave him Sinovamate and seizures completely stopped. So they're like, yeah, this is the right doctor for me. We should see what the long-term data and follow-up shows. So far, we have 7,000 patients using this uh, medicine over the last few years, and we did not see any dangerous reactions or side effects, except the three patients who had dress syndrome at the beginning, and we did not see any of that after slowing on the titration schedule. So this is considered a good initial signal, but we always, be very cautious and monitor closely so that we do not miss any rare reactions and side effects that are seen when the medicine is used more widely. But I think this medicine is very effective and our duty as doctor is to get out of our comfort zone, learn this new medicine, learn all the new treatments and techniques to help our patients with epilepsy who are suffering from uncontrolled seizures. So Sinovamate so far is only approved for focal seizures 18 years and older, and it is being studied right now for generalized epilepsy and it being studied for children. So let's wait and see what those studies will show. This was one medication for seizures and you need to learn about all the other anti-seizure medication to know which one is best for you and your patients. And to do that, I put together one video that summarizes all the anti-seizure medication that is a must-see video next. And don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Salam.